right, uh, let's take a look at another graph problem, high score. Um, so what's going on here? Uh, we have n uh, rooms and n tunnels, uh, and we start with a score of zero. And when you walk through a tunnel, uh, your score goes up or down by some amount, depending on the tunnel. I think of this as like a weight for the edge. Uh, importantly, it could be either positive or negative, though. That's actually key. Um, and we can traverse the same edge many times if we want to. Uh, so we want to get from room 1 to room n. What is the biggest score we can get? Uh, so you can think of this as a graph um, one way. Uh, right, these are the vertices. These are the edges. Uh, and the edges have weights, um, which are these scores. Uh, and this is sort of a shortest path problem, um, although there's two problems with that. First one is that it doesn't say the shortest uh, path. It says the maximum score, which is sort of like the longest path. Right? Instead of a score, you could think of these as like a length. Um, but the lengths can be both positive and negative. Uh, and the other problem um, is that the edge weights can be both positive and negative. Uh, right, so suppose that, um, so how can we handle this? So the way that we're going to handle the maximum is that we're going to negate all the edge weights and look for the minimum. Um, and then we sort of want a shortest path uh, rather than, um, you know, this is like a longest path or something weird. Uh, but you can just negate all the edge weights. Uh, so when you do that, the negative edges become positive and the positive edges become negative. Um, and... Uh, we still can't use Dijkstra, right, which you might hope, since it's a shortest path problem, uh, because we have um, some, po we have positive, ed uh, sorry, we have negative weight edges, um, and Dijkstra does not work with negative weight edges, right? The, the key thing that Dijkstra relied on uh, was that the shortest, like, path in the queue of the current frontier was actually the shortest path to that vertex, and the reason why that was true was that some other path, you were just going to add uh, more edges onto it. So it was just going to get longer. So the shortest path in the queue, you know, there, was, there were no other competitor shortest paths. But if there's actually negative weight edges in your graph, that's not true. Right? You could go down some longer path, and then you could take a really good negative weight edge and get to something sh shorter. Uh, so Dexter does not work in the presence of negative weight edges. Um, so we're going to use a different algorithm. Uh, called Bellman Ford, um, which I will explain. Uh, okay, and then there's one final complication, which actually makes this problem quite challenging, I think. Um, notice this clause. If you can get an arbitrarily large score, print negative one. Uh, so how can that happen? Uh, the way that that can happen is that uh, if there's a See, now I'm getting confused with positive and negatives. If there's a negative weight cycle in our graph, um, by which I mean, uh, if there's some way that you can go around the graph, uh, right, so for example, let's say that it looked like this. Uh, and these were all weight one. Okay, then what's the answer for this test case? Uh, the answer is like infinity, right? Because you can just keep going around this triangle, get three points every time, uh, and whenever you want, you know, whenever you get bored, you can go, you can finish up and go here. And you can get any score you want, uh, or as high a score as you want that way. Um, so the answer for this test case would actually be negative one. So this is an example of a negative weight cycle in the graph. Why do I say negative? It's because we're going to negate all the edge weights, right? Because we want the minimum instead of the maximum. Um, and so this is a negative weight cycle, because if you go around here, you get minus 3. And actually, even if this were plus 1 instead of minus 1, it would still be a negative weight cycle. Because even this, even though this one adds to your score, these two subtract. And so if you keep going around, you get negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And you can go as negative as you want until eventually you exit. Um, so that's a negative weight cycle. Is Anything you can go around, uh, get back to where you started, and but have you know a lower score, uh, lower lower total distance traveled. Um, but actually, uh, there's an interesting thing that makes this problem hard, which is that not every not every negative weight cycle means the answer is negative one. For instance, if the graph looked like this, 
and we didn't have this edge, uh, then it doesn't matter. Oh, sorry, that's a bad example. Uh, maybe if it looked like this. OK, even if this triangle is a negative weight cycle, it doesn't matter. Um, because there's no way to get from the triangle to the end. Um, and I guess similarly, you could imagine having a negative weight cycle. There's no way, even if you could get to the end from it, if you can't get into it from the start, it doesn't matter either. Um, so that makes this trickier, right? It's not enough to just find a negative weight cycle, which is a standard, or detect a negative weight cycle, which is a standard you know, thing that they teach you in Bowman Ford. Um, but it actually has to be like on a path from 1 to n. Uh, OK, so let's talk about how Bowman Ford actually works. Um, so we're just going to look at uh, a solution. I'm not going to code it up. Um, so Bowen Ford is actually pretty simple uh, conceptually. So this is the whole thing. Um, so we're going to store all of the edges in some big array, actually not by vertex. Um, and so Bowen Ford, the idea is that you just relax all of the edges n times, right? So that's what this loop is. And what do I mean by relaxing an edge? Uh, I just mean that you consider fo if following that edge um, is better than your current way of uh, of getting if following if following that edge d improves your distances, right? So you have like the shortest path um, to every node initially. Uh, initially, you know you can get to zero in doing nothing, but you don't know how to get to anything else, so they're infinity. Um, and then the edge relaxation, right? You have an edge from A to B that costs C. So you say, OK, well, if I start at A, if I actually like take that edge, right? if I start at A, and then I walk through that edge, which costs C, uh, that's another way to get to B. So if that's better than my current best way to get to B, then update my distance to B. OK, and you just do that for all of the edges, and you do it n times. Uh, so what is the idea here? Um, the idea is that after you've done the iteration, um, say the first iteration, then you have all of the paths of length 1. And after you've done the second iteration, then you say, OK, well, what if I add an edge to all the paths of length 1? Then, OK, so now you have all the paths of length 2, right? Adding an edge to a path of length 1 forms a path of length 2. And after the third iteration, uh, you're basically considering adding every possible edge to every path of length 2. You have all the paths of length 3. Um, so eventually, you're going to get all the paths uh, of length n. And like those are all the paths in the graph, right? except for these negative cycles. If there's no negative cycle, then the longest a path can be is length n. Because if your path, right, your path can only go through all the vertices unless it doubles back on itself. And what if it does double back on itself? Well, then you could just cut this part out, right, and just follow this path. Uh, and the only reason that it would benefit you to take this like detour back to where you came from is if there's a negative weight cycle. So assuming there's no negative weight cycles, uh, then the best path is always at most length n. And we find it after you know n iterations of this flow loop. That's why Bellman Ford is correct. Uh, if there is a negative weight cycle, then if you do one more iteration, you'll find that some of the uh, vertex distances decrease um, because uh, because it benefited you uh, to to follow the cycle. Uh, sorry. So what do I mean by that? Um, so if you're in, uh, right, like, let's say that you're actually an edge, like, on a negative weight cycle, um, then the best way, uh, what am I trying to say? Like, then there will be a path of length more than n that is better for you, right? Because it will be the case, actually, that you do want to go around this cycle and then keep going. Um, and that will be, or even go start going around the cycle another time. Um, and that will be shorter than whatever your best path is so far. Uh, and so that's what 
Um, that's how you can detect a negative cycle, right? If this is the n plus first iteration that started at zero, uh, so if and the n plus first iteration, um, then b is uh, part of a negative cycle, or at least reachable from a negative cycle. Um, so I'm marking all of those, right? This is a, a Boolean array. Um, and so what we said was, if you're on a negative cycle and uh, you're actually on a path from the start to the end, right? That is that you're reachable from the start and also you can reach the end, uh, then the answer is negative one. And so that's what we're checking for here. Um, so these, this is computing uh, all of the vertices that are reachable from the start and all the vertices that can reach the end, which is to say they're reachable from the end if you uh, go backwards. Um, right, so when I was reading in the input, I kept track of uh, the forward edges and the backwards edges. Um, and then this is just a sort of simple BFS, right, from some start vertex, like where can you get to by following these edges? Um, and if you flip all the edges, then you can ask from the end vertex, uh, you know, what, where can you get to by following the reverse edges, which is the same as saying which vertices can get to the end vertex. Um, so this BFS is just computing that. Uh, and so if there is an edge on a negative cycle that is reachable from the start and can reach the end, then the answer is negative one. Uh, and otherwise, there is no negative cycle relevant to us. So the answer is just the distance uh, to the last vertex and negated actually, because we negated all the edge weights um, because they wanted the maximum score and we like finding a shortest or minimum path, minimum score. Um, so yeah, that's Bowman Ford. Uh, so that the core idea is not so complicated. Um, it's just this, uh, but the tricky part of this problem is um, I think this part, like actually handling uh, whether the negative cycle is relevant to you or not, um, right? They'll, sort of all the presentations of Elman Ford will tell you how to tell if there's a negative cycle or not, um, but they don't really actually tell you how to incorporate it into your shortest path. So anyway, that's a, a nice trick for this problem makes this problem more complicated. Um, and we're just doing that with this, uh, this double BFS. Uh, so that's this problem, um, Bellman Ford, and this, uh, this cute little trick for you know, actually finding uh, the shortest path and the potential presence of negative cycles. Uh, so that's it.